Continues its Big Ten style pregame with Bethlehem of the Republic. with your national anthem under the direction of Mrs. Emily Bender.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Neuqua Valley Wildcats football for the 26th annual matchup of the War of 204, the Wabonzi Valley Warriors versus the Neuqua Valley Wildcats. Tonight, I'm Drew Rilio alongside Jack Thormeyer. The Wildcats will look to improve to 6-1 and, and clinch a spot in the IHSA State Playoffs as the Warriors look to pick up their first win of the season. Yeah, the Warriors haven't won it haven't won a game yet this year. So with the War of 204, this is their one rivalry game that they're going to depend their whole season on just to say that they beat the Wildcats because this Wildcat team this year, nothing is going to stop them. And especially if they can if they can pick up a win today, they'll be clinching a playoff spot. And so the Wildcats now to return to begin the game. Quarterback Mark Meneke suited up today in full pads, but unlikely to start. That will go to Ryan Moeller for now. The coaching staff not willing to risk Meneke uh, on a game such as this against a, a, a team with five losses and no wins. Uh, of course, Meneke coming off ligament damage within his ankle. Jack, tonight what do the Wildcats have to do to have a repeat of last week's game versus Mattia? Yeah, really today they're going to have to have a very critical and efficient offense with no big penalties to stop the momentum. And a squib kick now to start the game. That's off the helmet there of the Wildcat. He's going to rush up to the 28-yard line. That was Miles Miskell who lost the ball off his helmet but then got it back for a short gain there. Yeah, but like I was saying, it's some big features that you're going to have to see from the Wildcats to win this game is to have an efficient looking offense with a very small amount of penalties to really keep the momentum going. But especially in this cold weather, it's going to be really tough, especially on the pass game to, for QB Ryan Muller and the wide receivers as well. So you're going to see the run game heavy today as Spadafora is going to be starting the game in the backfield. And Hayden Foley will start at receiver as well. And Muller takes the snap. That's going to be a quick screen out to Miskell. He's going to cut it back inside up to around the 38. So a few unfamiliar faces there. That's Anthony Spezio in the backfield in place of Spadafora and McGee. Uh, seems like they're resting some of their starters for this game. Yeah, especially in such a big rivalry game. They, Nikwa against this Wild, or sorry, this Warriors team this year, obviously struggling a bit. They're just gonna play, they're just gonna play the third strings and put them in to make sure that the starters won't get hurt. And Moeller again will screen out this time to Carter Stair, the junior receiver. He's gonna burst up the sideline there to the 46 yard line. Another nice game. Yeah, he was taken there by Garen Bishop, the linebacker. Sorry, that is Spadafora out on the field, not Anthony Spezio. So McGee and Spadafora will probably still split carries tonight. And a notable inactive for the Wildcats, defensive tackle Justin Crawford, not in pads tonight. Moeller again. He's going to screen it out to Larkin this time. He's going to make a move up the middle, and he's got room to run. He's brought down at the 40-yard line into enemy territory. Yeah, he made a great move on number 12, Nick Hobart. He just hurdled over him to get a few extra yards there. But that's the second screenplay that you've seen in a row. And Miles Miskell will sub out here, as well as starting this game, Hayden Foley. So maybe not resting their starters so much as working on a split carry basis. But Hayden Foley was a new starter today. So we get the two back set here. Oh, false start there on Nikola. That'll be Cole Dukovic. Yeah, something I said at the start of this game, that those penalties right there that you saw on the false start, that's really something that's gonna hurt. Such, a, such an efficient offense that we usually see in a game like this, especially a rivalry game, the War of 204, 26 in a row, it's gonna be first and 15, so it's gonna be much more difficult to pick up 15 yards here. And Torres will be full back in front of Spadafora. Muller under center. 
He takes the snap. That'll be the first handoff of the game to Spadafora. He's going to bowl his way up. Brings another man down, but stopped after a few yards gain there. Number seven, Miles Miskellen, and number 14. We just saw him starting this game. Hayden Foley is going to come back in in the top of your screen with the light sleeves. So instead of Ryan Muscari and Julius Baker, they'll be going with Foley and Miskell as Moeller takes the snap. He rolls out to his right, steps up to throw into the hands of Stair. On the sideline, they're going to say that it's no good, incomplete. Yeah, it looks like, looks like that pass there definitely did hit the ground. Still a great attempt to get it, though. This Wildcat offense for a third and 12. They're going to have to bring out Ryan Moeller, throw a pass downfield. Miles Miskell will stay on the field as long and Hayden Foley as well. So QB Ryan Moeller is going to get the play and bring it into the huddle as you see it on the right of your screen. So here we go now for third and 12. Moeller and shotgun this time around. He'll take the snap, pitch it back out to Spadafora, who's going to try and get it to the outside. Oh, but he's brought down for a loss at the 48. That was 77 for Wabonzi. Sorry, 33 for Wabonzi. Yeah, the one who got him behind the line, that was 54, Jake Heeler. And what a great play to get behind the line and stop Silvano before he can get any extra yardage on that third and 12. But that's going to put him three yards back. And that's going to bring the punter, number 18, Aaron Rice. Receiving back is number four, Bridge Fowler, and number 12, Nick Colbert. So we'll get our first glimpse at this elite Wildcat defense here. And replacing Justin Crawford will be Justin Dikevich. Oh, nice punt there. That's going to get a favorable Wildcat bounce. That'll be down at the 11. Excellent punt there. So the Wildcat defense will come onto the field. All starters on. So we'll get our first look at this Wabonzi offense. Starting quarterback for them is number 16, Luke Elsie Jr. He'll line up in shotgun to start their first drive of the half. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. That'll be a handoff to start up the middle, but he's stuffed immediately, brought down at the 10 yard line. That's number two, Cole Dukovic, the star middle linebacker, wow. in on the tackle. There you go, Cole Dukovic, another great start. A great start on defense for him. The running back, AJ Campsey, trying to get up the middle on the draw, but he, he couldn't get anywhere as he was stopped right there by Cole. Up the middle, a great, great pursuit to get to the ball there. So in shotgun again is Elsie. He'll take the snap this time. It's another handoff up the middle. He's going to try and bounce it to the left, but no dice on that one. Brought down at the eight yard line. That's two Lost negative run plays in a row. Tackle by Loss on the play. Yeah, there on the tackle was Adam Tackle's Filburn, but also Filburn. somebody coming in with the pressure, Gabriel Willis. He's one of my big players to watch in this game. Gabriel Willis in the past couple of weeks, he's brought a lot of QB pressure and stopped a lot of runs, either to the outside or even getting behind on the ones up the middle. But he's really going to bring the pressure on the tackle, number 63. That's going to be Zach Macer. So here we go again for third down and 13 from their own eight. The Warriors will try and get something going here. Elsie will take the snap, immediate pressure. Tipped, oh, picked up, oh no, incomplete. Almost on the pickoff there, Larkin was in on the blitz, able to get his hands up there. 
Yeah, it looks like. Cool almost came down with it. Yeah, Payton Cool almost came down with the pick there. But it looked like initially somebody on the defensive line, I believe that was 48. Justin Dekevich. Justin Dekevich. I believe that was 48. He pushed the running back, number 28, Caleb Dowd, into QB. Elsie, that's going to that's gonna force him to throw that early. Payton Cool almost got the interception. And the punt here. End over end to Stare, who's going to field it. He'll make a move up. He's going to cut all the way across the field. He's got room down the sideline. He's at the 20. The one man to beat here for Stare. Brought down at the three-yard line. Almost had a massive touchdown for a second punt return of the year. But that'll be down in the red zone. Made a few men miss. Only had one to beat, but wasn't able to get it done. But insanely good starting field position. Yeah, we've seen this in the past couple of weeks from Larkin, and he's just too shifty for somebody to tackle him right up front. He can make that first move and make a man miss, go to the, each side of the field very quickly, very fast up the field. Taken down by number 25, Jacob McBride, from behind, because nobody was blocking him, though. He, are, he did have three blockers up front, so if only. So the Wildcats will start with the ball on their own four. Anything less than a touchdown here would be disappointing. Moeller will start this one in shotgun. That'll be a jet sweep out to the left for Stare this time. He's still not going to be able to make it in the end zone after like a two-yard gain. Yeah, Spadafora stopped early there. That's going to bring in Cole Dukovic and I believe... You have to assume we're going to see a power run up the middle here. Dukovic usually only comes in for these power settings. But it looks like he, right now he's playing a tight end role. Mascari noticeably absent from this game. And here we go. That's going to be hand off to Spadafora. He's going to bounce outside. He's brought down, but in the end zone he is. Touchdown, Wildcats. That'll make this game 6-0. Yeah, what a great play to get the power run in. It's already a 6-0 game with six, six and a half minutes, sorry, five and a half minutes remaining on the game. A great play to get up the middle. And a matchup I'd like to see already noticing Grant Larkin and number 12, Nick Colbert, the wide receiver in corner. Something to watch this game. Already a few scuffles already. So Cyrus will kick the extra point. It's up and through 7-0 Wildcats with five minutes left in the first quarter of this year's War of 204. So the Wildcats will kick this one off now back to the Warriors after an electric punt return from Carter Stair all the way up to their own four yard line the Wildcats take two plays to punch it in and make it a 7-0 ball game so the Warriors back to return this one. That's number 12, Nick Colbert, along with another on the left there as we get ready for the second Warriors offensive drive of the quarter. The other returner is Bridge Fowler. And here we go now. This one fielded at the 10 yard line by Fowler. He's gonna make his way up to the 30. He's free before he's brought down by Spezio at the 38 yard line. 
as this Niqua defense comes on for their second attempt here. Almost ended in an interception last drive after the tipped pass by Grant Larkin. So the Warriors will have significantly better field position this time around. And Elsie takes the snap here. He's back to pass. Pressure immediately, though. That screen pass is incomplete. Pass intended for Caleb Dowd. Just not enough spacing. If somebody got up there, I believe that was Josh, Josh Wenz. Got up and broke the coverage from the tackles. Got through the line. Forced a really quick, incomplete, and inaccurate pass. So it'll be second and 10 now for the Warriors. Elsie will take the snap. That's going to be a handoff this time. Or sorry, a keeper on the fake handoff. 5.20 left in the quarter. That'll make it third down for the Warriors. This Wildcat defense will have another chance to force a three and out. Yeah, it looked like frustrated. The running back in the backfield, A.J. Campsey, he really wanted the option there. And it looked like he was limping back to the huddle, but he's going to stay in. And he's going to be also in the backfield as well. And here we go now for the third and 10. That'll be a fake handoff up the middle there. Oh, almost brought down again by Cool. Another tipped pass ending in an incompletion, but that'll be a three and out for the Warriors. We noted earlier that Ryan Mascari was absent from this game, but he's actually playing lineman tonight, wearing number 70. I'm sure why the switch from tight end, but as we see the punt here, that's going to be end over end. Stare. He's going to let this one go out of bounds. They'll get the ball at the 15 yard line. Ball goes out of bounds. Out of the First down, first and ten. First and ten, So Mascari this tonight play, starting at offensive line. As well, on the bottom, you're going to have Hayden Foley as well. So Mascari slotting in on offensive line, fully slotting in for him at receiver as Muller starts in shotgun for the third Nequa Valley offensive drive. He's going to fake it and keep it himself. Muller's going to screen out to Larkin, but that's over his head. Seems like Larkin wasn't ready for that one. Yeah, but fortunately it was a forward lateral, and it did make it an incomplete pass because if you have a bad roll, especially – on grass like this and not turf, there's definitely something of a chance there that it's gonna be a fumble and could lead to a big turnover. So Moeller will bring in the second and 10 play this time. Moeller and shotgun again. Four and a half minutes left in the quarter. He'll take it and hand it off to Spadafora, who's going to bowl forward for a few yards gain. Brought down at the 24-yard line. Yeah, but that's going to lead us to a big third third down here. It's, I believe it's about five yards to go. But it's going to be a big third and five. Hayden Foley and Miskel going to sub out. So that's going to bring in Larkin and, I believe, Carter Stair. As Muller's going to go back into the huddle. 
they'll tell them to play and they'll get back on the line. And we come in with the fullback formation now. Trevor Torres in. That's going to be a handoff out to the side to Spadafora, who's brought down immediately for a loss. Seems like a blocking breakdown there for the Wildcats. That'll make it third down. Or sorry, fourth down. They'll bring out the punt team. Yeah, back as well. That's going to be Nick Colbert and... I believe that's Bridge Fowler. So the punt here, he's got a lot of time. Oh, that's a booming punt. That'll make it past the 40 yard line. Oh man, buffed, fair caught, but fumbled the ball there. That'll be down at the 41, the refs will call it. So ca called for a fair catch and then went off his hands. Tried to run it forward, but that'll be down at the point of contact for the Warriors. More great field position for them. But this, yeah. wild, this Wildcat defense has been on lockdown tonight. Yeah, but it looks like, as we saw in offense earlier, number seven, Miles Mescal, he's going to switch in at corner on defense. That's definitely going to be an exciting matchup to see. So LC will be back in shotgun again. Warriors seem to be only running out of shotgun tonight. And that'll be another handoff. Brought down immediately, met. Immediately from the line. That's Justin Dikevich, assisted by Cole Dukovic. Yeah, definitely a big stop. Something that's going to help your momentum a lot, too. Something, obviously, as I said earlier, something that's going to help you a lot in this game is Nick Landino is going to sub in. And he's going to play corner as well as Miles Mescal is going to switch to the other side. And they're going to have four wide. So Elsie will be back to take the snap again in shotgun. See, Gabe Willis immediately beats his man, but Elsie rolls out to his left. Tipped off the hands of his receiver to out of bounds. That'll be incomplete, making it third and 12. A matchup to watch is Gabe Willis on the left side of the line there, running circles around his blocker. Wouldn't be surprised if we see him take get a few hits there on Elsie. Jack, what have you seen tonight from this defense that's making them so uh, potent in the pass rush? Yeah, something in the pass rush that I've seen, as you just said and I said earlier, Gabe Willis coming from the outside, a big, big help, as well as Nick Williamson coming from the other side. That's definitely a great combo you want on the, an opposing offensive line. Wildcats bring the blitz here. Elsie's going to roll out to his right. He's going to try and pass it. That's complete, but not good enough for a first down. That'll make it fourth and three. Yeah, as I just said, and if you saw in that play, both sides, both sides of QB contained, just covered, and they couldn't, and they couldn't get an accurate pass off in time to get it much more downfield. So they're going to have to stay for another punt. So that'll be another third and out forced by this Wildcats defense. Larkin to stare back to return yet again. So that's Matt Chevalier back this time. That's a short punt. Not a lot of distance on that one. That's going to bounce out of bounds. Great field position for the Wildcats. Yeah, only a 7-0 score with about a minute and 45 seconds left to play. Only 7-0, you're going you're gonna to expect that the Wildcats are going to bring whatever they have to offer here and make it a 14-0 ball game before it's going to reach the second quarter. Something they definitely want to get in this game, the War of 204, is get a, a early lead and sustain that efficiently through the whole game and maybe you can put the subs in as they saw last week against Matea. Muller takes the snap here. He's going to drop. He's going to step up in the pocket. Look to pass over the middle. That's brought in by Larkin. He still makes a move. He's still up and going past the 50-yard line as a flag is on the field. 
Lowers pass to complete for Larkin. There is a flag on the field. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is for, but they're going to discuss with the Wabondi coaches. It's gonna. It looks like it's going to be a face mask. Yeah, Larkin swung down violently there after the catch and run. Moeller, great awareness there to make that read, running out to his right. A few weeks ago, we would have seen Moeller just take that for himself and run for the first down, but this time he decided to use his arm and get it to his best offensive weapon, Grant Larkin. First down, first and ten at the 45. So here we go now for the first and ten after the face mask penalty. Muller and shotgun. Another screen out to Larkin who's going to haul it in. He's got room. Brought down after being wrapped up in the ankle tackle by number 11, Bryce Provis. It'll be second and five. Yeah, on that screenplay there, it looks like from the start, it's just a great first step by Larkin and a great catch. But you have to look here at Carter Stair and Hayden Foley with the great blocks on the outside to create some great room and give Grant Larkin an option to make a first move outside. But we're already going to have four receivers deep and Silvano in the backfield. Muller takes the snap, drops back to pass. That's going to be a quick one out short to Miskell. Yeah, that one was tipped by Sean Carroll on the line. This will be the last play of the quarter. Muller and Shotgun again. Nikwa going a little more pass heavy tonight. Normally we see them trying to establish a run game. But Muller's going to be back to pass again. Same play out to Miskell. Almost short again, but he brings it down. Wow. A great catch by Miles Miskell. And the line judge, they're going to give him a first down. And he's so, going to be out of bounds, so the clock will stop at 16.9 seconds to go. And Miskell moves the chains there on the great grab. Sorry, but it seems like he was in, had a bad angle there, so the clock will keep running. Looks like Looks they're like going to get quick get to the line, off. but they're not going to get it off. Yeah, they're going to let the clock run out here. So that'll bring us into the second quarter. Wildcats hold a slim lead, 7-0, with the ball on their own 34. Against the Wabonzi Valley Warriors in this year's War of 204. They'll have first and 10 starting off in the second quarter. So the Warriors will be the first to take the field after the quarter break. Dukovic in the formation now, two fullbacks. Muller under center this time. That'll be a handoff up the middle to Spadafora, who's going to rush forward. He's carrying the pile. Six-yard or seven-yard gain there. Yeah, big interior blocking by Joey Matteo to bring the line forward and keep going. Spadafora is going to get an extra couple yards there, maybe even four or five. So that's going to make it a second down and about four. So here we go now for second and four. Muller's going to pass this time. That's over the middle of Larkin who brings it in. He's finally wrestled down at the 11-yard line for the first down. That'll bring the Wildcats firmly into the red zone.
Here we go now for first and 10. Muller will be under center again. He's going to fake the handoff, roll out to his right. He's going to throw over the middle. Oh, off the hands of Dukovic, but we're going to get a flag. Wow, that's going to probably be on Bridge Fowler for the defensive pass interference. Unless this is offensive. But it looks like they're going to put him at the line. Yep, it's going to be a defensive pass interference. Tough break for the Warriors. Dukovic not necessarily open over the middle, but Moeller was able to place that ball right where only Dukovic could really get to it. Unfortunately, off his hands, but that would have been Dukovic's first touchdown of the year. First down, first and five. So it's going to reset the down. It's going to be first and five from about the six-yard line or so. Moeller will go under center again. First and five. Goal to go. He'll take the snap this time, hand it off to Spadafore. He's going to try and make his way in, but he's brought down for a gain of nothing. Even a loss there. The run game this year, or this game so far, has not been as strong as it has been in past games. Second down, second and five. Ten minutes left in the half. The Wildcats are looking to extend their lead on second and goal. That'll be another handoff to Spadafore. He's got room this time. He's going to be in for a touchdown. That's his second of the night. 13-0 Wildcats. Yeah, Spadafore is just putting the stat sheet up through the roof this season. He's going. He's having. He's probably has probably could be up to a thousand yards at this point, but so many yards this year racking up and so many touchdowns to this game already and there's still 10 minutes left in the second quarter. A thousand may be a bit of an exaggeration there but certainly he has looked incredible throughout this entire year after he came in for an injured Jaden McGee. That's going to be up and through to make it 14-0 and Spadafore of course finding the end zone almost every game except for the one against Naperville Central. Found it twice against Naperville North in his varsity debut and now twice already tonight. Yeah, something the Warriors need to do now is to just regroup and focus and try to get this offense to make a good, efficient drive downfield and put seven on the board to make it, make the lead just cut in half for the Wildcats. And they still do have 10 minutes to go. So if the Wildcats did get the ball back after that, they could definitely put, put it up to a 21-7 ball game. So Rice will kick off now for the third time tonight. And here we go, that's a short one. Caught at the 15 yard line. Oh, brought down, what a great play. That's Miles Miskell in on the tackle. Came screaming off the outside edge, beat his man. Able to bring him down from behind to prevent a bigger gain. What an yeah, incredible play. What a gator roll tackle by Miles Miskell. Way to get up field and stop him early to get prevent a big gain up the field. It's gonna be Placed at about the 23 yard line. It's gonna be first and 10 with a fresh set of four plays here for the Warrior offense. The stifling Wildcat defense now back out on the field. Elsie will take it in shotgun. He's gonna hand it off this time. Oh, Dukovic in on the tackle, able to bring him down for a huge loss. loss on the play. What a Wildcats great stop. Beating their blockers like crazy tonight. Yeah, something we saw last game against Matia. Way to get way to get 
Nicholas Rush and Gabriel Willis on the outsides for the QB contain, but they're just going to keep going in. But they're going to bring Rush out, and that's going to bring in 52, Adam Filburn. Rush normally doesn't play defense in the starting center, so Filburn comes in to his normal spot. This is going to be a quick pass over the middle. Oh, that's picked off! Or ripped away or something, but somehow Josh Freeman has ended up with the ball. Not sure if he ripped it away from his receiver or picked it off off the tip, but the Wildcats get another turnover in their own territory. Joshua Freeman, what an interception. What, what a great play to shift the momentum back to this Wildcat offense. And that's gonna bring the chance to get this a three score ball game with the ball plays just at the 22 yard line. So in shotgun now, McGee will get his first snap of the game on offense. And this will be a quick draw to McGee, who's going to be wrapped up, but he's still fighting. Brought down for no gain. McGee. Yeah, McGee seen his first snaps today. Spot of Florida already had two touchdowns this game, so he's going to sit out. He actually used to be the second string, but now it seems as... McGee is falling back from his injury. He's gonna slowly, slowly get down there in the death chart. He's gonna be the second string now as it seems, but he's gonna get some snaps now with a clock ticking down with eight minutes to go. So the fullback Trevor Torres is in now. That'll be another handoff to McGee. He's gonna bounce out to the outside, brought down hard. Another flag though on the field. And that'll be on Nikwa holding. That'll yeah. push him back 10. I believe that was on number 10, Trevor Torres. But if you were listening last week, as I mentioned multiple times, whenever you see Trevor Torres or Cole Dukowicz come into the game, you already can assume, if you have been watching film, obviously with Bonzi watching film, you have to expect a power run up the middle even if it's McGee or Spadafora, but you have to expect what's coming. And obviously we saw it there, but Trevor Torres with the holding is gonna push him back another 10. So second and very long, second and 19 to go. Same formation in though. Moeller's gonna pass it over the middle. Larkin brings it in again. He's brought down, gets him back to where they started. But Larkin with another athletic play there. He's been up there grabbing those balls. That's his fourth reception or fifth reception of the game. Miskell subbing in here. Dukovic will come out, will be in a more traditional set for third and 11. So Ryan Adams will come in now for Trevor Torres. We're gonna be looking at five out here on third and 11. You have to wonder if they kick a field goal if they don't convert here, they are within Joe Cyrus's range. Muller will be back to pass. He's gonna heave it up. Oh, but that's way over the head of Carter Stair, who was wide open, had both his men beat so soundly. So now it's an interesting position that the Wildcats are in. Of course, there's real, no real risk so far of going for it here on fourth and 12. The defense has been astounding. Yeah, as you said, no real risk. And Joe Cyrus, the kicker warming up, he didn't even take a look down the sidelines because they knew they were already gonna go for it on this fourth and 12. But the ball place at the 24, 12 yards to go, even with McGee in the backfield, you're gonna have to expect a pass here. And Muller will drop back this time. He's gonna fire over the middle, over the head of Larkin, overthrown, but Larkin, of course, not a bad idea there to go to him. He's been on fire tonight. Yeah, definitely not a bad idea at all, Drew. So this Wildcat defense will come out again. They've been electric so far. 
only ever on the field for around two or three minutes at a time. Movement there on the line, but no flag. Elsie's gonna roll out to his right. Oh, batted down! That's Gabriel Willis, able to beat his man out to the left, and they're on the rollout. What a play. Yeah, as I just saw, or sorry, as I just said earlier, something that's gonna really hurt this Warrior offense is Rush and Gabriel Willis coming from both sides with the QB contain. Because as you also saw earlier with the, the uh, QB options, Something that you're going to have to have is the QB contained on the outside, but Gabriel Willis, a great job to deflect the pass down and to prevent any big plays. On the line here is Willis, Dukovic, Cohen, and Williamson. And they're going to get penetration again. That's going to be a handoff this time. He gets to the second level, but Dukovic, or sorry, not Dukovic, there is, looks like Josh Wenz there on the tackle, stops him in his tracks. 6.50 and running left in the half, 14-0 Wildcats. Filburn will sub in for Williamson. About six and a half minutes to go as they get to the line here. Elsie and shotgun for third and 10. This Wildcat offense has not yet picked up a first down. He'll take the snap, that's gonna be a play action. He's gonna go deep. And wrong shoulder there for the receiver, number six, Sean Bison. And uh, Elsie wanted the outside shoulder and Bison wanted it inside and that's gonna lead to fourth and 10 again. Yeah, Elsie. the punt team. Elsie also wanted a big call there, arguing with the refs about trying to get a QB hit, but Sorry, that's going to be a sideline warning for the Warriors as well. Seems They're going like to have to have their players get back or else that's going to be a penalty. Seems like not a lot of them were very happy with that late hit Elsie took, but no call. So six minutes left in the half as they take the punt here. Oh, that's a short one. A knuckleballer down to the 50-yard line. Stair picks it up. He's going to try and get some more. He's forward for a few yards. They'll get the ball just shy of the 50-yard line. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super sure why Carter Stair took that there. Super risky, but it just went between the legs of the Warrior player, and he's he tried to take it upfield, but only to an extra gain of about two yards. That punt there, almost no spin on it at all, wobbling in the air. Led to only about a 20-yard net on that. So with five and a half, or six minutes now left in the half, the Wildcat offense will try and up their lead to 21-0. And a handoff now to McGee. He's gonna charge forward, uses his momentum and is brought down after a gain of seven. Yeah, big tackle there by Jacob McBride to take him down with him as he was going down. But tackles like that where you're gonna bring them down with you as you're going down are gonna give them a couple extra yards, but they're gonna put the Wildcats back. I believe there was a penalty. Sorry, they're actually just gonna have a late huddle. But it's gonna be a second and five with the ball placed on the Warrior 44. Bowler will start under center. Spadafora will be in at fullback now, both running backs. And yeah, the fullback carry now, that'll be good enough for a first down most likely. Looks like they're gonna stop him at third down. They're gonna keep him a yard short, but it's gonna be third and one. And there he is, Trevor Torres going in. They're gonna put Spadafora out. Trevor Torres going in with McGee still in the huddle. It's gonna be a run up the middle here. 
you have to expect it with McGee in and Torres as well. This jumbo package has been extremely effective all year for Niqua. And yep, McGee up the middle. He's gonna bowl forward for a few more than he needed. That'll be a first down to extend the drive. Yeah, with a tackle by Garrett Bishop. Had to take him down with him. That's gonna give, give McGee a couple more yards. If only it was an upright tackle to put him back downfield, it would have forced a fourth and one situation for the Wildcats. But it's gonna be a fresh set of downs with a fresh set of 10 yards as well. So it's gonna have four Wildcat plays Still in the dead zone, right around the 36-yard line, but with four minutes to go, we'll have to see what the offense can bring out here with Torres still in the backfield with McGee. So Muller will start in the center for first and 10. Yep, that'll be another handoff to McGee. Oh, he somersaults forward, tripping over his own feet there, but a great gain. Looks like he could have gone for more if he had kept his footing, but nonetheless, a gain of five. Yeah. Maybe just something with the turf monster there. Maybe maybe tripping over a lineman, but either way, he's gonna still get a good gain of about six yards. It's gonna be second and four on the 30 yard line. And Muller here will drop back to pass. That's gonna be quick out to Larkin who gets more work for today. Brought out of bounds at the 20. It's been a heavily targeted player and you'd think with the amount of times they've been going to him, they double him at least. Yeah, but as he as he falls out of bounds, it's gonna stop this clock. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go. First and 10, the ball placed just on the 20 yard line exactly. And will Bonzi trusting their corner, Karsten Finkley to lock down Larkin. Hasn't been going too well for him so far. First and 10 now at the 20. That'll be a sweep outside to McGee. He's gonna break a few tackles. He's gonna keep on going, stiff arm now. He's into the end zone almost, but brought out of bounds and multiple flags on the play. Yeah, that one of them's gonna be a holding on 79, Aiden Nash. And they're gonna have to, the rest are gonna have to meet here as three flags were thrown on the field. They're gonna have to have multiple here. Best case scenario for Nico here is offsetting penalties to keep them where they are now. So holding against Niqua, second down. So yeah, that'll push Niqua back 10 yards. It seems like they picked the other flags up. Yeah, three flags on the field. But penalties is really gonna kill your momentum as a team offensively and defensively. So it's gonna be a first and 20. So that was two holding penalties against Niqua. Wow. Oh man, that's gonna move him back. It's gonna move him back a lot. Or possibly an unnecessary roughness call and a holding. So we'll get first down and 35 here. Yeah, definitely something you won't normally see on a scoreboard or you just have to question if somebody missed an input, but it is first and 35. You are looking at that right. Two penalties on the on the Wildcat offense there. And the Warriors only bringing three rushers. That'll be a sweep out to Miskell. He beats that man. He's gonna be able to, oh, he slips on the grass. Seen multiple Nequa players slip. Yeah, just another, another turf monster in the backfield. After all that, we'll be on second and 34. Miscal had a lot of room to run, but unable to keep his footing. Makes you wonder if the grass is a little bit wet or if the ground being hard due to it being cold has something to do with this. Muller under center again. He's gonna fake the screen out to Larkin, drop back to pass and roll around there in the pocket. Quick screen out to Mis Miskel who's brought down again, will be having third and very long. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a third and 33. They're gonna give him the forward progress as he was pushed back. Third 
Larkin in the huddle with the team and number 17, Ryan Adams, gonna sub in. Minute 30 left in the half. Wildcats up 14-0 at their own 43. They've got third and 33. Muller will be in shotgun. You gotta expect a deep ball here. Oh, that's that snap's almost fumbled. Oh, he pitches it up to McGee. McGee's got so much room to run. He's gonna bring forward there the pack. Interesting play there. Muller fumbles with the snap a little bit, then shovels it forward to McGee, who bursts forward for a gain of like 15 yards. Yeah, great tackle by Mason Ridden Riddenbach as well, but somebody's gonna take a timeout. So Nico will take the timeout. They're gonna discuss what to do on fourth and 17. So after all that, they're still fourth and long. What an odd drive. Yeah, but a kicker, Joe Cyrus, not warming up here. A little bit out of range for him. A little bit out of the range of most high school kickers, in fact. So they are gonna go for it here. Of course, the Wildcat defense being so potent, why wouldn't you? Chevalier will sub in at receiver this time. Five out, Moeller in an empty backfield. Warriors will bring the pressure, but a clean pocket for Moeller. He steps back, he's able to escape. He's gonna roll out to his right, sets and throws. Over the middle, caught by Adams. And he brings them right back where they started this drive. Yeah, great tackle by Garen Bishop to stop a big play on a fourth and 17. But incredible pocket awareness from Moeller, able to step up and eventually roll out to the side when it collapsed. But he had a clean pocket for a while. Unfortunate that no receivers were able to get separation there as this Nico defense steps back onto the field to see what they can do this time. Low snap, Elsie fumbles around with the ball. He's gonna step up in the pocket. Brought down by Filburn after the fumbled snap. That'll be a sack. And that probably will run out the half. Yeah, that's gonna be Filburn and Willis. And both these teams are too gassed for another play. They're just gonna run the clock out and it's gonna be halftime. 14-0 Wildcats. So a dominant performance so far from the Wildcat defense and somewhat lackluster from the offense. They'll talk about it over halftime. 14-0 Wildcats, and the marching Wildcats are next up.
Tonight, the band will perform the entire show with four productions. The first being The Merry Old Land of Oz. The second being If I Only Had a Brain and Ding Dong the Witch is Dead. And the third being Somewhere Over the Rainbow. The final production is Off to See the Wizard. Our feature sousaphone souls is Abhijar Rakesh with a uh, quick duet including Shreya Yampati on piccolo. Drum majors Ryan Wang and Logan Carlson. Is the band ready? Nico Valley Marching Wildcats, the field is yours for halftime entertainment.
the Deco Valley Monty Wildcats. We now welcome to the field the varsity dance team. Tonight, the team will perform the Fred Rogers Classic Bang Bang. Give it up for the varsity dance team. Give it up for the Nico Valley Varsity Dance Team and the Nico Valley Martini Wildcats. Humphreys and Arda Ackman, please report to the athletic tent. Also at this time, would you please get out your 50-50 tickets? We have the winning ticket up here. We're going to ask that the, uh, the winner please go to the concession stand. And the winning number is 714-832-0000. Eight three two. Will the winner please go to the concession stand and pick up your eighty dollars?
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second half of this year's War of 204 between the Wabonzi Valley Warriors and Nequa Valley Wildcats. The Wildcats hold a 14-0 lead after a dominant first half, and the Warriors will look to claw their way back into this one in the second half. Jack, what did you see from Nequa that's given them this lead? Something that's given them this lead is just the big breakthrough plays, especially from Spadafora with two touchdowns. But something that's even been hurting them are the penalties. Something that's been hurting the Warriors are their penalties, and especially the Wildcat QB pressure with the combo of, of course, you have Nick Williamson and Gabriel Willis on both different sides as defensive ends. Kickoff now is the Wildcats. That one's a little further than the last few, but that'll be fielded at the six yard line. Good blocks, oh, he's gonna break through. And, oh, he's still up, he's still out. Spezio's able to push him out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Great blocking from the Warriors there, but we'll have to see if it makes much of a difference against this Wildcat defense that have been absolutely lights out tonight. Yeah, but you have to notice what a great play by the punter Aaron Rice. Sorry, the kicker Aaron Rice and the punter, because if he if he's the one man to beat at the end there, and he can just wrap him up a little bit to slow him down and get more guys on the Wildcat special teams downfield, he stopped him out of bounds there instead of getting a big breakthrough run for a touchdown. So here we go now. Elsie will take the snap out of the shotgun. And that'll be a handoff up the middle, but he's met immediately. This Warrior offense can't get anything going against the Wildcats. And of course, you have to compliment the linebacking core for the Wildcats too, Cole Dukovic and Josh Wenz. They've been lights out whenever the defensive line doesn't make the tackle. They're there, right there to back them up. Yeah, something we forgot to mention in the first half is that it's Nikwa Valley. It's their dad night tonight. Players, their dads will, and great father figures will be on the sidelines today watching them play. In their away jerseys. As we take Elsie here, takes another low snap. That's gonna be a screen out to his running back. Incomplete, but that's laid out, that's flag. gonna be a flag. Late hit there. Absolutely laid out after yeah. the whistle. It's unfortunate to see, because if he catches that ball, that's a clean hit. But since he didn't catch that ball, even if he catches it, that may be a hit on a defenseless receiver as he was reaching back to get it. He had not yet made a football move, but that's an unfortunate break for the Wildcats. That'll give them an automatic first down, their first of the game. And it comes at the expense of the Wildcats penalty. Yeah, Wildcat sideline did not like that call. Unfortunate to see something that's gonna help this Warrior offense a lot. But it's going to still be 14-0, but they're going, to, they're going to see if they can get some big plays here on offense to try to put seven on the board and cut the lead in half to just a one-score game. Elsie only running out of shotgun now. This one will be a draw up the middle. That's 19 there. Mason Ringenbach, he's brought down after a short game. So here we go now for second and six. Elsie back to pass, he's gonna launch it up. And great coverage by Friedman. Not even close on the pass. Yeah, there wouldn't be a chance for any pass interference calls there. Inaccurate pass downfield, nothing you could get there on a flag if you're trying to go man to man, try to get a flag or a catch. But it's gonna force the Warriors to go more than likely a pass play here. Something short, middle of the field on third and six, the ball placed on the Wildcat 38. 10 minutes left in the quarter, third and six for the Warriors. Wildcats are gonna look to shut them down yet again. This will be a draw up the middle. Oh, he's got room to run. Ringenbach's gonna get the first down. 
Great blocking, opens up a gap in the middle of the field. Yeah, the refs are going to signal for a first down. I'll see now, back in shotgun. He'll take the snap, and that'll be a quick counter handoff to Ringenbach, who's brought down this time. Wenz is in on the tackle, shoves him out of bounds. Dukovic on the assist. They saw it coming that time. Just about nine and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Just two quarters to play here in the War of 204. So here we go for second and 11. Elsie takes the snap. He's going to drop back to throw this time. He's going to try it on the left side again. Friedman's there, breaks up the pass. Great coverage on an underthrown ball there by Friedman. He's having a great game tonight already with a pick. Third and 11 now for the Warriors. Yeah, great coverage there. Ringenbach will sub off for Bryce Provis. Got to look for a pass here. And the Wildcats surely know that. Elsie hikes the ball. That'll be a run this time. Brought down Filburn in on the tackle to start. Slows him down and he's brought down. That'll make it fourth and 12 for the, wa for the Warriors. Looks like they're gonna keep, more than likely keep the offense out here. Coming in for the Warriors is tight end 81, Panay Tripani. Ringenbach subs back into the dangerous running back. Wildcats will try to force a turnover on downs here to keep this shutout going. Elsie takes the ball, he's gonna be dropping back to pass. Great pressure there from Dukovic over the middle. Oh, almost picked off by Friedman again. He almost had his second of the game. Crazy good pressure there. Dukovic able to get in Elsie's face. That'll be a turnover on downs, and the Wildcats will take control at the 33-yard line. Great job there. Now they're going to bring the offense out and see what they can do to try to make it a three-score ball game. Still only 14-0. Most fans would, ex would expect a larger score here, but it, nothing across the board in the second half. Only four minutes in. But still, with time left to go, you have to expect that the Wildcats can put an efficient offense and put some points on the board with this drive. Here we go now, a handoff up the middle. He's going to be stopped. Ringenbach in there. No luck on the run. The run has not been as strong. Regardless of the two rushing touchdowns, the run game has not been picking up very many yards. They've been relying on Grant Larkin and Ryan Moeller a lot more for the yardage. And then Spadafora comes in and finishes it off. So up now for second and 10. Moeller will take the snap from under center. That'll be another handoff to Spadafore. He's gonna try and counter it around, but he's met again by Ringenbach. Yeah, great way to get behind the line there. That's gonna push him back. It's gonna be a third and 11 for this Wildcat offense. And on the sideline, Aaron Rice, number 18, the punter, warming up here. It's going to be hard to get a first down. The ball placed in your own 32. Rice is going to have to warm up to get a big boot here if they can't convert here on third and 11.
Moeller will start under shotgun this time. You got to expect a pass, most likely over the middle to Larkin or Stare. He'll drop back to throw. He's going to fire. That's Larkin on the sideline. Doesn't look like he got it, but they'll definitely go for it on fourth down here. Larkin with great job getting his feet down in bounds. Wow, they're going to give it to him. It's going to be a first down. So first and 10 for the Wildcats now after the great snag by Larkin. He's up to eight receptions on the day. Handoff now to Spadafora. Oh, he's got a lot of room. Makes a couple men miss. Down at the 35-yard line. What a great gain. That's going to be a tone shift now for this offense. Yeah, a great tackle by Bridge Fowler, but nothing to bring down the speedy and shifty Spadafora as he subs out. That's going to bring in Jaden McGee and Trevor Torres, so it's probably going to be a power run up the middle here. And the great thing about these Valley running backs is that McGee and Spadafora both possess great speed and, and shiftiness, but also they're not afraid to put their shoulder down and run through someone too, which makes them great dual threats coming off the edge. Yeah, a, gr a good job by the Warrior defensive line there as number 63 subbing in. That's gonna be Zach Maser. Quick gain of three there, second and seven. Another rush to Spadafore. He bounces off the back of Trevor Torres. He's able to fall forward to the 30 yard line. Yeah, five and a half minutes to go. Still a 14 nothing ball game. Third down, third and six. Moeller this time fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. He's going to go deep. Larkin there makes a, oh, he runs around, cuts back towards the middle. He's going to try and go through the end zone here. He's going to make it all the way in after the shifty run. Cuts all the way from the sideline up the middle of the field. Makes a few jukes. That'll be 20 nothing Wildcats. Grant Larkin with the receiving touchdown. What a great play to get a, to move the ball across the field. Like Bo Jackson, like, Turn around. He's going to go to the other side of the field. What a great first initial move right after the catch to sense where the defense is and the amount of players at which side of the field. So he's just going to switch it to the other side of the field where only one or two defenders were. He's going to make a quick first step in, and he's going to get a quick six here. And the kick from Cyrus up and through again, 21-0 Wildcats. With the kick from Cyrus, it's going to make it a three-score ball game at 21-0. And the score like that, five minutes to go in the third quarter, that Wabonzi Valley student section is diminishing. Kick off now Spicer for the fourth time this game. The Warriors are going to get another chance here. They gained two first downs last drive, so a significant improvement from before. But still nothing on the scoreboard for them. This kick is a booming one down, received at the two-yard line. And through the blocks, that's going to be Jacob Person on the tackle. Brings him down before the 20-yard line. A great play there. Yeah, great tackle there by Pearson, but... Here comes the Warrior offense. Haven't seen a lot from them tonight, but a scary defensive line in the hands of Willis and Williamson, of course. 
Franklin's going to be tough to get anything past them, especially with the runs and trying to get a quick pass off. Even something very quick like a slant up the middle is going to be really tough, especially with all those guys coming in. LC will take the snap now. Nikwa showing blitz. Du Jeremiah Johnson's going to corner blitz there, but stuffed on the run for a loss of two, it looks like. Now is the perfect time for the Nikwa coaching staff to experiment with different types of defensive schemes. The Warrior offense looking largely ineffective so far. Maybe time to look ahead to their next matchup against DeKalb, who's a slightly tougher opponent within the conference, and they have to travel an hour away to that one. So it may be time to start planning for that and use some of these snaps as a sort of scouting report. Williamson is going to get there. Elsie slips away. That's going to be low to his running back, but Dukovic is able to finish the play at the 10. That'll be a loss. Oh, Nico thinks they have the ball. The ball was out. Philburn has say, it, but they're going to say he was down. They're going to say he's down. Nico sideline not liking it at first, but they're just going to take the third and 15 and take whatever they can get, especially get some good field position back. So about three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. They're going to bring, they're going to sub some guys in here. The ball placed on their own 10 yard line. They're going to have to have a big play here to make it a fresh set of four plays. Great play from Williamson. They're able to get around and force Elsie to throw it early and Dukovic able to finish it off. And another run up the middle. Interesting decision on the third and 15 within your own 20. But three minutes left in the quarter. Yeah, it seemed like the play call there just kind of gave up on the drive. Something that the Wildcat offense has not done this year whatsoever. As you saw with the drive earlier, started with a first and 35. They brought it all the way back. And they got just close to a first down with only about eight yards to go. So here comes the punt. Oh, almost blocked there, but that's a good one. End over end. Chevalier. Oh, it's off Chevalier. He loses it, but he's able to get down on that ball. Lucky break there for him that it bounced close to him. That that punt was almost blocked. Three players in the backfield there. The Warriors can't like that from their linemen. Yeah, a ton of guys in the backfield there. Almost hit the punter. But then great job by Chevalier to recognize where the ball was and get on top of it again just to make sure that you can't have another turnover in even better field position than they just had for the Warrior offense. Two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Wildcats up 21-0. And a foul there on the Wildcats. Unsure where that flag occurred, but that'll push him back again. Whole ton of yardage. First the foul. First down. So first and 25 now, another situation where we've got a first and long. Of course, earlier we had first and 35 through some amalgamation of penalties. But Muller's going to roll out to his right. He's going to pass over the middle. That one's wide right to Stair, who had room. Unfortunately, an inaccurate pass from Moeller. Yeah, but that's going to stop the clock. Two minutes and 28 seconds to go in this third quarter of the War of 204. Wonder if you're the Wildcats now, do you think about start to uh, burn some clock, try and get your guys out of here with the win on skate? Yeah, get back to the locker room in this cold weather. Moeller's gonna 
hand it off up the middle of Spout. Four. Oh, he breaks it out to the outside. He's going to get around the sideline. Down the sideline he goes, brought down outside at the 30. Another explosive run from Spadafora. Yeah, great, great Gatorill tackle by Provis to get him out of bounds. So that's going to stop the clock again at 219. But it's going to be a fresh set of four plays, not three, because something you have saw with this Wildcat offense all year, they love to go for it on fourth down. So that's going to be a fresh set of more than likely four plays with the ball placed on the Warrior 30-yard line with Torres in the backfield and Spadafora. Have to expect a run right here. And yeah, we're gonna get a counter handoff to Spadafora. He does the same thing, but this time Rittenbach is there. Able to bring him down after a gain of just a few. Of course, this Wabanzi's team is 0-6, and, and Mattia, who fell to Niqua last week, 36-0, only win came against Wabanzi the week prior. But tonight, at least to me, I don't know about you, Jack, but this Wabanzi team has looked way stronger at least defensively, than Mattia did. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you'll see professionally one team can match up so well against one team and not the other. And Miskell is able to catch it over the middle. That was a lofted throw. Wow, they're going to say it's an say incomplete it's pass. Seemed like Miskell had possession there. Must not have made a football move, but... That pass was close to being intercepted by number 12, Nick Cobert. Yeah, it looked like he definitely definitely had a t probably three or four steps on the ground, but they are going to say that it was an incomplete catch, but it would have been a fumble. But it's clock's going to be clock's going to be stopped. Third 1 minute and, and 13 seconds to go. Third and 6. So here we go now. Fullbacks in, but of course that doesn't necessarily guarantee a run on a long yardage. But yeah, we're going to get it to McGee. He's going to bounce out to the outside, try and make a few moves. Oh, he puts a shoulder into somebody. Ooh. Knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Very fortunate there. Big break for the Wildcat offense. McGee's going to fumble it out of bounds. Obviously going out of bounds, that's going to still keep possession for the Wildcats. Luckily, it wasn't somewhere like in the middle of the field. Minute running clock left in the third quarter. And McGee again will get the run. He's trying to power through he's just bouncing out bodies left and right that'll be a good game there for McGee yeah but that's going to bring in Larkin and Spadafora so in McGee's absence when he had a shoulder sprain people seem to forget people seem to forget how effective he really is in breaking tackles and getting a lot of yard after contact so Spadafora is going to get the call here. He tries to bolt through a few guys, brought down at the 10. And, of course, with how electric Spadafora has been so far in his varsity career, starting against Naperville North for 230 yards and two touchdowns, people seem to have overlooked McGee and how effective he truly is. And having both of them back at full strength for the playoffs is going to be an extremely effective tool for them, especially against stronger teams. Yeah, it's going to be a tough transition for this Wildcat team going into conference games like this, especially with a weaker end of end of year schedule here tonight with the Warriors, then the DeKalb Barbs, and back away against the Mattia Mustangs. But something that they're going to have to work on is getting back into the fast tune of, of play that they played with teams like Naperville North, Naperville Central and St. Mary's of St. Louis, Missouri. They're going to have to get back into the swing of things and get back into what that pace is like to try to stay stay competitive in these games. We saw it last year, unfortunately, with the loss to Maine South. But last year, though, remember a few of the games before that, specifically against Palatine in the first round, were extreme blowouts until we got to that Maine South game 
which really shows you where this team is and how far these juniors, now seniors, have progressed, especially on defense. Against Naperville Central, 14-7, the only score allowed was a pick six. So the defense has allowed no points in the past 10 quarters of, or sorry, 11 quarters of football. As the snap runs through there, there's a penalty. That's gonna be a full start in the Wildcats. I think they were trying to go on two snaps there. Center went early. Everybody just followed him, so it was a fumbled snap. But just in case, Moeller picked it up anyways, but it, he's gonna be with Coach Ellinghouse quickly, so more than likely we'll just see the same play. And again, speaking on the effectiveness of the Wildcat defense, no points allowed in the past 11 quarters. We talk a lot about the pass rush, but we don't talk a lot about the defensive backs and how effective they are. That ball looks like it was out. A bad snap again, sure two consecutively. There. A couple miscommunications maybe, but both teams obviously say they have it. They're gonna give it back to the Wildcats. Another sloppy execution from the Wildcats. That'll make it 37. So that's gonna bring in Miskell and Ryan Adams. Along with wide receivers coming in, we saw Hayden Foley starting this game. We haven't seen much more out of him, but Torres will come out. And there comes in Moeller to get the play. Eleven minutes left in this fourth quarter. Muller will take it in shotgun this time. Oh, bumps into McGee. Oh, ball's out. That's a fumble. Recovered by the Wabonzi defense, but that ball's fumble. flipping around. Ball's down. They're going to give it to Wabonzi, it looks like. Three botched plays in a row. You really hate to see that for the Wildcats. Not sure what happened in between quarters that caused that. Yeah, but both teams with a big break there. If you didn't see at the end of that play, with the fumble still on the ground, looked like somebody who was trying to recover it tripped and couldn't pick it up immediately to bring it back to the house for a set of six. So they were just gonna push it out of bounds. So luckily, Wildcats can prevent not a big score or better field position than the Warriors have here, but still a big break for the Wabonzi to get the ball back. Wildcats in a bit of disarray these last few plays, defense and offense. Low snap for Elsie. He's going to be rushed immediately. He's going to roll out sacked. Nick Williamson brings him down after Cohen trips him up. That's what you want to see from this Wildcat defense is finishing the plays in the backfield. Yeah, and with that, it's going to be about 11 minutes left to play. About 10 minutes and 30 seconds left when this play is going to start. Still a 21-0 game, so this is probably going to be the drive that Wabonzi has got to score on and put points on the board if they still want to stay in this game. So Elsie will take the snap out of the shotgun. This time it's a handoff up the middle, but Rittenbach is met immediately. That was the linebacker there, Dukovic, and Peyton Cool, the free safety. Jumped in on the tackle too. Yeah, big stop there. But as I was saying, Wabonzi's gonna need to put points up on the board here to stay in this game. Their student section obviously doesn't have much hope in them leaving this game early because it's gonna be a third and 15. You're gonna have to expect a pass play, especially with four wide and only one running back in the backfield. It looks like a solid four people left in the Wabonzi student section. As Elsie takes the third down and 15 snap, he's gonna roll out to his right. Almost picked off there again. Friedman has been in the fray on many of those. Could have three picks as of now, but only has one. Well, I say only, but has one pick on the day. So that'll make it fourth down and 15. They'll bring out the punt, punt squad. Chevalier and Stair back to return. Yeah, you usually see Carter Stair and Grant Larkin in the back, but they're gonna put Chevalier back there and they're gonna have Larkin up in the blocks. High snap to the punter. Oh, Dukovic almost blocked that one. Stair's gonna be back to return it. 
Grabs it. Oh, makes the tackler miss. He's got a lot of room. He's going to bounce out to the sideline again. Brought down at the 45. Could have What could have been a massive hit turned into a nice gain there from the slippery stair. Yeah, Friedman, good block up front. And Stair was going to use that to get a couple extra yards. He just got off the, off the block there. Could have been a much larger gain, but there were still guys in the backfield. So it's something you'll just have to have to imagine what could have happened but nine minutes and 30 seconds to go and you'll have to see if the Warriors are going to try to strip the ball here punch it out to try to get good field position back try to get their offense back in this game as it's their Wildcats are up by three scores and a handoff to Spadafora now loss of one on the play what a great pursuit by Dakota Bradar, number 80, on the blitz, the linebacker. Great way to get up the line and get Spadafora for a loss of one. Second and 11 now for this Wildcat offense. Ryan Adams out wide. Muller's going to screen it quick to Larkin. Larkin's going to get great blocks. He's going to move up, try and cut back, but tackled by a multitude of Warriors. Yeah, and this, this game is slowly juicing down. Only eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the War of 204. Muller will line up in shotgun for third and five as the clock runs down to eight minutes. He's gonna drop back to throw, laser over the middle. Miskell on the sideline. Are they gonna give him forward progress is the question. Looks like just short. Wouldn't be surprised if we see him go for it. Yeah, they're gonna call him short, so it's gonna be on the screen there. You'll see it's a fourth and one, but it's nothing less than an inches as Ryan Adams and Muskell are gonna leave. And that's gonna bring in Stair and Grant Larkin, a great, great combo, but Taurus in. And the Warriors are gonna take a timeout, not the personnel they wanted on the field, especially with Taurus and Spadafora in the backfield. I've already seen it a couple of times in this game, a lot in the whole year. You'll see a lot of those power runs up the middle. So a timeout now. And the Nequa student section as well starting to clear out, recognizing that this game is all but over, barring any miracle comeback from Wabanzi, which I personally don't see as very likely. Yeah, especially with this weather, Drew. It's pretty cold out of here. Probably a 40 to 45 degree feels like game, especially with the wind not helping. So it'll be fourth and one for the Wildcats as Ellinghouse draws up a play here, trying to get him the first down. Got to expect the power run here. Moeller under center with Torres behind. That Wabonzi defense creeps up there. Oh, they're going to try and get him to jump. As they start the play here, Spadafora up the middle. They're gonna He's going to get that on forward progress, it looks like. Looks like the ref is gonna spot him above the line. Still a great stop to only get him to a gain of about one yard. Well, Bonzi thinks they stopped him there. They, yeah, they're gonna give him the first down on that. Great way to power forward and get that ball over the plane before being pushed backwards by those D linemen. Miss Skell gonna sub in as well. Same formation again for the Wildcats. Warriors showing blitz, they're gonna bring the heat. Moeller able to evade the sack, he rolls out to his left, he's gonna throw it wide. That's brought in by Larkin, slips on the 
grass there again, but great awareness. Moeller able to duck under the sack. Wow, they're not going to give him forward progress either. Could have been about a three or four yard gain, but they're only going to give him one. It's going to be second and nine with a six and a half minutes to go. Six and a half minutes and running left in this game. The Wildcats are going to try and bleed the clock and close it out to secure a second straight Warp 204 victory. And back a few years ago, this rivalry was a bit more competitive. In 2012, they faced off in the state playoffs. Oh, Moeller's going to go deep for Larkin. Larkin's there, but that's out of bounds. Great coverage by the Warriors. And probably should have been an outside shoulder throw from Moeller there. Yeah, Moeller a little bit inaccurate there, but you can't blame him with a big hit in the backfield. Yeah, back in 2012, these two teams faced off in the state playoffs, which of course was a great rivalry game. The two, Wabonzi of course, extremely good, and the Wildcats with their continued greatness in the DVC. And from there, Wabonzi has slowly been taking steps backwards, at least in their football program. So the Wildcats have had some recent shows of dominance against them. Moeller in the shotgun this time for third and nine. He'll roll out to his right, but he's under pressure. He's going to throw a screen across the field to Spadafora. Oh, Spadafora breaks free. He's got the first down and some. What a heads-up play by Muller to get it across the field to the open Spadafora, who really makes it happen. Yeah, great tackle by Sean Carroll from behind, but what a great play to switch sides of the field. It looks like originally Ryan Muller was scrambling to the right side of the field, the stronger side, but they're gonna, he's going to throw it across the field to Spadafora for a big gain on some great blocking. But that's also gonna bring out Trevor Torres gonna be in. So Stare and Larkin will be your receivers out wide. Torres in the backfield. And that'll be a handoff to Spadafora delayed. He's gonna make it around to the left side again Spins forward to the 10 for the first down yet again. Spadafora has been really picking it up lately in this second half. So the clock's gonna keep rolling here. Probably gonna get a playoff. Sorry, it's gonna be a warrior timeout. So 5.20 left in the game here. The Wildcats have this one all but closed out. They're going to look to add another score on to make it 28-0. So win here for the Wildcats clinches their spot in the IHSA State Playoffs, as well as nearly solidifying them in the, the DVC as champions of that. Central would be the only team able to compete with them, assuming Nequa would lose a game, but that doesn't seem to be in the predictions. Central, of course, is three, or sorry, two and one in conference play. Their only loss coming against these same Wildcats two weeks prior to this. So this would essentially clinch the division or sorry, the conference for the Wildcats as well. And McGee's going to take the pitch outside. He runs. Oh, he's got room. He's going to get a touchdown here. Miskell on the block to finish it off. Touchdown, McGee. What a great welcome back. The sideline definitely having it. Great to see Jaden McGee back on the field from his injury. And he's going to get his first touchdown since. So, so that'll the, make it 27-0. So with the extra point here... It's going to make it a four-score ball game. Cyrus out to kick again. He'll look to be four for four. And that one is good. Cyrus four for four on the day.
Again, pay at the concession stand. It's buy one, get one free for burgers. Five minutes, 13 left in this game as Spicer gets ready to kick off now. This one's off. That's gonna be recovered at the 10 yard line. Pearson in on the tackle again. He's made two great special teams plays in a row. And here comes the Wildcat defense. You're gonna have to expect to see some subs in. Yeah, first one on Carson Rayum, the defensive tackle slash end. And as well as Jacob Pearson staying on the field. So we have seen these guys in a varsity game before, but still second string nonetheless. We're gonna see a little bit more of that as this game progresses into its closing stages. Oh, Dikevich is able to throw him back. They're going to call him down from forward progress, but that was another low snap. The center can't seem to get the ball up into Elsie's hands effectively. That'll make it 4.50 running clock, second and 14. Dikevich is able to bust through and finish the play. Yeah, maybe just some miscommunication there. It seemed like Filburn was down for a second, but he's going to get back up. But coming in now is Peyton Brown, number 39. He's going to be playing corner along with Chevalier playing strong safety. And Versi Walker will come in as well. The senior star, but rarely gets in due to the stack nature of this Wildcat defense. We get to see a little bit of him here. Elsie takes the snap, he's gonna hand it off again. Oh, wrapped up and brought down. Almost instantly. That is the linebacker, 38 Easton Taylor. We saw him come in later in the Matia game as well and star in a few great QB hits. This time he comes in and shuts down the run. Likely we'll see him a lot next year with the graduation of Wenz Freeman and Dukovic. Yeah. He's really been he's really been showing off what he can do in the later stages of these blowout games. Subbing out for the Warriors, Adam Runba. But only three and a half minutes left to go, and it looks like the Warriors are just going to slow it down here. And they'll call a timeout. Looks like practicing yeah. kicks on the sideline. Number 30, Sean Kirchner. Maybe a second second string kicker arising behind Joe Cyrus, but on kickoffs and puns still is Aaron Rice. Three minutes 20 left in this game. Third and 15 for the Warriors when they come out of the huddle. And Riley Hannon will sub in for Nick Williamson. More subs coming on. Elsie will take the snap. And he's going to drop back to throw. Dikevich in pursuit. Elsie's going to get the ball off, but that's to the sideline. That'll make it fourth and 15. They're going to bring out another punt team. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be the game here. Three minutes and 16 seconds to go and the Wildcats, I believe the Warriors are out of timeouts as well. So they're just gonna juice the clock and it's gonna be, as of the score now, a 28-0 Wildcat finish. Chevalier and Stare back to return again. This punt a little better than the last one. 
It'll land out of bounds right at the 50. So the Wildcats are just going to look to bleed out this clock. And it looks like in the huddle, they will have some backups in the huddle, as I believe Anthony Spezio, number 33. Don't know who's going to go out on, on offense yet. But in the huddle with the coaches, there's Spezio in. And he is going to go into the field, so we will have Spezio back. And Andrew Cohen will come in at guard. And Ryan Adams at the bottom of your screen. As well and as Hayden Andrew, Foley. As well as 71, Hassan Ali. Muller's going to hand it off up the middle to Spezio, who's brought down for minimal gain. On the field as well is number 83, Will Allen. We saw him a bit last game, too. Caught a screen pass. Spezio, of course, is a standout player on special teams. Two and a half minutes rolling clock. Also on the line, Alex Petrascu, the great offensive lineman. Muller takes the snap. That's going to be a pitch out to the left to Spezio. Spezio cuts up the inside. He's held up by his own player before being brought down by the Warriors. He's getting a lot of work now. Of course, next year with McGee graduating will likely be the second running back behind Spadafora. Yeah, but with about a minute and 55 seconds to go, probably no more than three plays left in this game. Third and seven, now you gotta expect a pass here. Spezio and Allen still in the game, as well as Joe Balgrow. Muller's going to fire over the middle. Oh, almost picked off and almost caught by Will Allen there off the tip for the first down, but that'll be your fourth down, most likely a punt here. Yeah, they'll bring out the punt team. Spicer to punt now. And Spicer has a lot of time to get that one off. Oh, wow, that's a great punt. Fair catch called by Wabonzi. That'll get down to the 15-yard line with a minute 20. Got to expect this will probably be the last drive of the game. A lot of the scout team defense coming on now. That's Nathan Walshman, number 82, number 35. That is Joey Metlica, the linebacker. And number 89, saw him a bit earlier in the game, Carson Rayum and Versi Walker, looking like he's going to play corner on the strong side of the field. 51, Brian Dillon and Joseph Russell, number 60, coming in as well on the line. Peyton Brown again at corner. As long as Riley Hannon staying at defensive end, too. Jeremiah Johnson will sub in at free safety for Peyton Cool. And the backup quarter. Oh, what is happening here? Sacked on the miscommunicated handoff. That's a backup quarterback, Oliver Riley. Recovered by the Warriors for a loss. Coming on now is 32. That is number 32, Michael Bakke coming on out of defensive back for Nathan Walshmitt. Miscommunicated snap there, looked lethargic and slow for the Warriors, second and 17 now. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was, but backup QB Oliver Keller just couldn't get the handoff in time. It looked like he was just slowing down as if it was a handoff, but he got hit by hit by Michael Backey from behind. It was 40 seconds to go, 35 at snap. More than likely the last play of the game. 
Snap taken here. That's a, oh, Rayum pushes him into the end zone, but they're going to wow. call him down. They're going to call him down. No safety there. They wanted it, though. Great play by Rayum. Yeah, tough break there. And, yeah, that'll bring the end of this game. The team, two teams lining up. 28-0, the Wildcats prevail over the Warriors in the War of 204, making the 27th edition of this theirs to take home. Thank you this year for joining us. This will likely be our last broadcast of the season as it is the last regular season home game. And your final score. We'd like to thank three camera people we had this, this year, Burhan, Jaden, and Serena. Again, the Wildcats prevail 28-0. For Jack Thormeyer, I'm Drew Rilio, signing off one last time for this season. We'll see you in November for basketball.